In this video, we are going to talk about how we can approximate um, some irrational numbers. Um, so we're going to define that in just a second. So it says um, sometimes your root, so if you're going to square root something, is not a whole number. When this happens, the number is called an irrational number. So irrational number. All right, so it's the difference between trying to square root something like 25, um, which is a perfect square, so it just turns out to be five, and square rooting 24, which is not a perfect square. So 25 is five because it's five times five equals 25. With 24, there is no two exact same numbers that multiply together um, that get 24 without doing this mess of a decimal. So this decimal is a decimal that never ends and never repeats. That's known as an irrational number. Your most common and popular irrational number is pi. That decimal never ends and never repeats. All square roots that are not perfect squares are gonna be irrational numbers. Okay, so uh, an irrational number is a, specifically a decimal that never ends and never repeats. Okay, so square root of 75. 75 is not a perfect square. We would get a decimal that never ends. So I would like to approximate that without using a calculator. So how do I go about doing that? So what I'm gonna do is off to the side, I'm gonna list out some of our perfect squares. So like two times two is four, three times three is nine, Four times four is 16, five times five is 25, six times six, 36, seven times seven, 49, eight times eight, 64, nine times nine, 81, 10 times 10 is 100. Okay, that should cover. So the way that you approximate this is actually a lot more straightforward than it seems. Like you don't have to totally trial and error this by any means. What you do is you look through this list and you surround 75 with the nearest perfect squares. So 75 would sit in between these two. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna put 64, 75, and 81. All right, the reason I surround it with those is because the square root of 64 I can do, which is eight, the square root of 81 is nine, and the 70, square root of 75 is somewhere between square root of 64 and somewhere between square root of 81, which means it's gotta be somewhere between these two as well. So I know the easy way is to just say 8.5. No, we're gonna do more accurate than that. Now it's still a guess, it's still an estimate, but um, this 75 is kind of differs by six to get to the 81, but it differs by 11 to get to the 64. So this 75 is closer to the 81 than it is 64. So our decimal should be closer to nine than it is eight. So here's where I'm kind of do my best basically. So maybe this is an 8.7, maybe uh, somewhere around there. So I'm off, I'm off by a decimal or two, that's not bad. Um, so what is the actual value? So the square root of 75 is 8.66 which would round 8.7, not too bad. All right, and then same thing on this one. We wanna look through our list. We wanna surround it by perfect squares. So 60 would be in between these two. So you're looking at, it's gonna be in between square root of 49 and square root of 64. So it's somewhere between seven and eight. Definitely favoring the eight because that only differs by four where these two differ by 11. So this is gonna be maybe like a 7.8-ish, okay, something like that. So let's see how close we are. So square root of 60 is 7.7, not too bad. And that's the idea is you're not gonna be perfect on it, but as long as you're off by a decimal at most two, that's a pretty good estimate, All right? And then the last thing on this is, how do we put these things on a number line, All right? You got square root of two, square root of six, 
To be honest, we're going to make them into decimals. So we're going to do square to two. And so I'm going to go out two decimals on every one of these things. So this thing is about 1.41. Square root of three is about 1.73. Square root of five is 1.24. And the square root of six is about 2.45. All right, so here's the reason why I'm going out to the two decimals. I got all these different numbers and I'm gonna start by, and I, oh, I have a bunch of decimals. So I'm gonna start with my scale at a 1.0. So all of these spots after are gonna go by 0 0.1. So like a 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5. But I'm only going to write out just kind of the 1.5. Otherwise, it gets a little too busy if I write out all the ones in between. So 1.5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2.0, 2.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 2.6789. Okay. So all these decimals are kind of in between here. But I wanted to be roughly as accurate as I could. So if I'm going to do a 1.41, this is a 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1 1.4, but it's not perfectly on 1.4, it's just a smidge off. So maybe it's right there. So that is the square root of two. Right? It's not exactly on 1.4. So it's 1.4 and some change. And then here it's 1.7 and some change. So this is five, six, seven, and a little further out. This is square root of three. And then, uh, and then 2.0 or square root of five was it 2.24. Sure that was coming from 2.24. So um, 2.24 is 2.12. And some change, but that change is almost halfway. That is the square root of five. So 2.2 and almost halfway because of the four. And then here we're looking at it perfectly halfway. So 2.4 and then halfway. So 2.4 and then right in the middle. Okay, so that's how I would go about. Um, writing these things down and notice that I didn't put the decimals on them. I put the square roots because those are the exact values. These were some kind of approximations. So um, these are roughly where these things would line up on a number line. All right. And so before that, we did some estimating where you were surrounding the perfect squares and kind of roughly figuring out your decimal based on which value is closer to. All right. Thanks.